And here we go. This is Fantasy Grounds Unity. And like I mentioned today, I am going to be prepping for my Pathfinder 2 beginner box set. And today I'm going to be doing one of the maps, the first map under Atari. And I'm going to be adding some line of sight. And I'm also going to be adding some lighting ranges as well. Well, some light sources. Maybe. If the map calls for it, I'll, I will definitely add them. So... Uh, how I how I prep. Uh, this is a this is a campaign that I'm going to be running just in Otari. So I've kind of I've built this from scratch, and I'm using all of the Pathfinder two core modules. I'm using you know if there's any kind of monsters that I need from any of the APs, I will load them up as well, and make duplicate copies of the monsters. So, uh, you know, whenever I create a campaign for a specific setting or rule set, I'll always divide it up into player tools, DM tools, and adventures. Now, when I run the game, I always have adventures and DMs tools together, as, as you can see here. Like, here's all of the here's all of the adventures that i have uh these are all like low level adventures that i'll eventually run people through so i'll have those all prepared etc my dm toolbox is stuff uh that i can refer to in the game uh, like creature identification all the dcs for the uh creature levels etc and as the players get you know higher level i'll add more dcs for the higher level that they get so this is always uh, this is always an ongoing process, and I'm always working on it because uh, as my players increase in level, then I add more content according to the level that they are. So, and then here, yeah, with creature identification, here's all you know how to you know what kind of skill check do you need to identify an animal or a dragon or a news. So yeah, here's all the skills. So it's just easy, you know, reference material for me. And I'll just keep adding more and more to this as I need it. And then here's exploration. I really like the exploration uh, activities and skills that you can use in Pathfinder 2. So I've also listed a bunch of this stuff. And then a bunch of extra story seeds in case the players go off and do whatever they want to then I can just kind of glance over these really quick and say, okay, well, here's a little side quest that we can do real quick. And there would be hardly any prep needed or, or anything like that. So, yeah. So, one second. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much my my DM tools that I use. So when I when I run the game, the players log in. I have my adventures and my DM toolbox. Now my player toolbox. This is stuff that I will create in another module that the players can view only. So take, for example, if you purchase any of the Pathfinder 2 APs, if you if you purchase any of the D&D 5e official campaigns, you'll notice that we have a player's guide and we also have a DM's guide for it. You know, everything that the DM would need. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got going on there. So the players will be able to... Uh, uh, use that content uh, right now. I got one second. Sorry, I got a uh, reply to Brad. He's sending me a message. All right. So I'm going to go into my adventures. And, you know, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to ask way and I'll, I will uh, get to them as I can get to them. So the Pathfinder beginner box set for Pathfinder 2 is called Menace Under, um, Menace Under Society. <laughs> that was an old 80s or 90s movies movie. Uh, Menace Under Otari. Uh, it's a level one to two adventure. And I've already put this together. 
Uh, and uh, this is basically, you know, all of the starter, you know, dialogue and stuff. And then I also put together a map of the town of Otari with all of the information about uh, Otari. Uh, here is a couple of in images of Otari that I can share with the players to kind of set the mood on what the town looks like. You know, it's a small little seaside lumber town. I've also taken the map of Otari, which there's there in Pathfinder 2, there's been quite a bit of material written about Otari. There's uh, there's content about Otari in the Abomination Vaults three book adventure path. There's also uh, there's also some content in the beginner box set. And then there's also some content about uh, Otari in the standalone adventure which we're running, um, well, which I'm running on Monday. So I basically took all three sources and I combined them into one Otari map. So that was, uh, that, that took a little bit of time, but the result is what I wanted. And I'm really glad and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So my players, they're gonna be exploring Otari uh, in the first session. So, you know, they're going to be able to walk around Otari. I'm going to give them a pointer out of my assets folder. Uh, I won't have any kind of line of sight on, on the map. And they're just going to be able to walk around, meet the merchants, because, you know, this is an Otari campaign. So not only is there, you know, this adventure troubles under Otari, there's also the possibility of doing the three book adventure path, the Abomination Vaults, which is a mega dungeon that's under Gauntlet Keep here in the upper left hand corner of the map. And then there's a bunch of other small adventures with Pathfinder Society that are also located in Otari. So that's the whole reason for me putting this uh, adventure uh, basically uh, a story journal of nothing but all of the adventures. So these are all the adventures that I found, excluding the Abomination Vaults adventure path, which is a huge adventure path at uh, three books. So that's just a little bit of backstory on this campaign and how I set my campaigns up. And I, I usually... I've been setting up all of my campaigns like this for years now. So the more that I've done it, the faster and the more efficient that I have gotten. I don't use the parse program that we use in-house. I copy paste everything from the official Paizo PDFs that I get for having the subscriptions. So, or if it's another uh, adventure, then there's no PDF, then I will scan and make my own uh, PDF, which is a daunting process, uh, believe me, especially when you're adding OCR layers with text and stuff like that. So it can get pretty daunting. Uh, so yeah, here's here's the uh, town of Otari, and it says everything. All of the key players, all of the different locales, all of the information. And then as you can see on the map of Otari, I have everything pinned out. So here's everything for the hinterlands. Here's everything for Gauntlet Keep. And there's not a lot of information, but I can always add more, which is a great thing about using all of the different story journals. And then here's, you know, location 1 to 19 here on, uh, or actually location 1 to 20 here in Atari. So wherever they explore, they'll be able to find out something about the town of Atari, the key players, they may get some quests, etc. So yeah, this is going to be a fun campaign, and I'm really looking forward to it. So here is the adventure that I'm talking about, Menace Under Atari. This is, uh, like I said in the beginner box set, it's for levels one to two characters. And it just starts here. You know, you're in the small town of Atari, blah, 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 blah. You know, you meet, uh, you know, different people in the town. And in fact, you're going to meet uh, Tamalee Tandervel, which is the owner of the fishery. And right here, here is the, on the fishery, go to the map. Oh, and then I also have the Starstone Isle as well, which is where uh, actually Otari is located. And you can see Otari is located right here on the Southern uh, portion of the Cortos Islands. 
and which is actually one of two islands of the Starstone Isle. It was created by Aridan, the living god. So, yes. So I also have this, and then, you know, of course, I have the, you know, the map of Otari as well. And then we'll look for the fishery here, which the fishery is number 13. So we can just go right to number 13. And here is where Tamerly Tanderville is going to be. And in fact, I think I have to... There's an image of Tamalee that I think I forgot to add. No, I did not. So I'm going to have to actually go into the PDF and I'll get the image for Tamalee. And then I'll also post that in there because I love to share images with my players. So and then anytime, you know, as I'm as I'm kind of reading adventures, I'll kind of highlight certain things. I'll, I'll put it in bold. Any kind of like perception checks or skill checks in general are always bold even if it's a pre-made adventure when i'm preparing and i you know read ahead for the adventure i'll always you know put in bold any kind of skill checks because it catches your eye right and then you can just say oh yeah there's a skill check involved here so you'll know the dcs of it okay so once you get the uh, the adventure you know you go into the cellars of the of the fishery Voila, here's level one, and the players will appear. The players, I believe, will appear here in location one. And I've, I've, already, I've already put all of the data into Fantasy Grounds already. I did this several weeks back as I was preparing, you know, for the game itself. And as you can see, you know, I put, you know, everything and all of the text that your players are supposed to know and you're supposed to read the the text i always put it in the chat boxes and you can you can always click on these chat bubbles and it'll send it to the chat or you can just you know you can you can also just if you want to you can just you know copy and paste it in the chat box or whatever so but yeah you can pick these up drag it down there you can pick these up send them to players and stuff so yeah you can do all kinds of stuff so we are going to take a look at the very first encounter called Hungry Rats. And I'm going uh, I'm gonna to minimize this, kind of put this to the side. I always like to put, I always like to minimize things so I don't have to try to reopen them again. So I want to start here with the Hungry Rats encounter. I'm going to kind of enlarge this a little bit so I can see what's going on i want to read the part of the adventure so i want to see if there's any kind of lighting in here or anything like that because if there is then i, I need to add uh, some lighting sources as well but it it doesn't seem like there is any kind of lighting so the players are going to need to light torches or burn candles or use their or use their dark vision so Right. So it doesn't look like there's any kind of light in here. So that's pretty cool. There's some rats, but you can see I've also built the encounters and stuff. And I, I just need to add tokens, which is not a problem at all. And I'll do that here in a little bit. I'll always I'll always change out tokens, etc. So okay, so it doesn't look like there's any lighting sources in this area so this is just going to be pretty straightforward I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and add some line of sight occluders so let's see what you guys got going on in chat so yeah that was a video that i i wanted to make uh because a lot of people were saying oh there's not a lot of space and you know the program remembers where you put things and then you can also get a couple of ex extensions as well that will memorize your windows so yeah talon clip over on youtube how's it going you're loving the lighting yes yeah, are we we're uh, we're excited about it bell over in twitch what's going on bell is our new social media expert she starts on monday or tuesday East over there on Twitch. How's it going? Oh, uh, let's see. All right, don't see any other questions, so we are gonna get going.
thanks everybody for hanging out by the way as well this is the first of many fantasy grounds unity prep streams that i'm going to be doing so i'm going to be doing these every friday at 3 p.m eastern time okay so to turn on line of sight in fantasy grounds unity it's super easy you just open up your map you unlock it and when you unlock the map it will give you all of the different wall occluder options it'll give you all of the lighting options etc so you just want to make sure that you enable or disable line of sight so by default it should be turned on and all you do is just click on the eyeball so when you turn it off you'll notice that all of the lighting goes away and it's just a map that everybody can see so this is how you turn on and off line of sight in fantasy grounds unity okay so now let's go ahead and add some walls so i'm going to go ahead and turn this off we're going to go to uh, the tabs up top here there's your layers which is very important you manipulate layers like you would in photoshop as you would in uh, any kind of video creation paint.net gimp any of those types of programs here's if you want to paint or if you want to use the stamp tool or anything like that very important tab here is the effects here's the line of sight which is uh, looks like the brick wall here's all of the new lighting features that carl and john had just added in well mostly carl i believe uh, and then here's uh, any kind of masking that you you know this is in fantasy grounds classic so if you, you don't have to use line of sight if you want to if you don't want to you can just simply go ahead and use fog of war if you want to and this is the mask the zoro mask and then lastly, here's all of your grid information. You can change all the different, uh, you know, five foot or 10 foot or et cetera. So I wanna go into line of sight and I wanna start doing some walls. So once I select line of sight, I wanna go ahead and click on the walls here. And then I'll be able to now be able to do walls. Now, what kind of walls do I wanna do? Do I wanna do lines? Do I wanna do rectangle? Or do I wanna do ellipse, which is a circle? So I just wanna do lines and I'm just gonna quickly, now, when I'm, when I'm doing my occluder walls, I don't do it right on the edge because I, I want my players to be able to see there's a wall there, right? So if I, if I kind of offset it a little bit, and you, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it other ways. You can, you know, you can use the space bar. You can use your arrow keys to, to line these down. But for this, I'm not doing that. I, I'm just going to try to get these lines as straight as I can. And you'll notice above the red line here, the players will actually be able to see the wall because I want the players to be able to see the wall. I just don't want them to see just flooring and then that's it. I want them to be able to see what type of wall is it? Is it a stone wall or is it a wooden wall? Is it natural earth? So as you can see, as I'm doing my clear lines, I'm doing it at the very edge of what the players would see so they can actually see the line and then you know uh, i'll just kind of go through some of this as well out of the room and i'll just kind of work my way around and you can get as uh detailed as you want to i mean i'm not uh, too worried about the every little pixel worth of detail uh, so i'm just kind of going around and just so the players can actually see that hey this is a natural earthen wall instead of just giving them a line to where you know they don't they don't know what type of wall it is so i like to do this as i'm doing my occluders for line of sight and then I'll just kind of do the first couple of rooms. And as you can see this, you know, this is a very long process and it can get even that much uh, more cumbersome if you want to do even that much more. So I could zoom way in and get, you know, even that much finer in detail for all of the, oops. All right, so I'll join this here and then I'll keep going. 
I think it's a little bit too close as you can see. So I'll have to go over here and then I'll just kind of block that off there and then I'll go here and then I'll just continue on. All right. So as you can see the, you know, you'll need to not zoom in too much. All right. Mr. Dungeon Master, what is this 2020 Paizo Incorporated logo on the floor? Is that like a magical rune? Well, yes, it is. <laughs> so, and then I'll just kind of work my way around the Paizo logo. So as you can see, this is how you do blue walls. Like I said, you can do as many as you want points. You can do them as fine as you want. You know, I'm not really worried about every little nook and cranny. So as long as the, the players can actually kind of see what's going on, you know, with the walls and stuff, because I, I like that. I just don't like to put the occluders right up to the edge to where they, they don't know what's going on. As you can see, there's quite a few points already. So I'm going to go up to this, uh, I'm going to go up to this room and then I'm going to go ahead and work my way back around. And if you uh, beautiful folks in the chat have any questions, feel free to ask them and I will, uh, Try to get to him as fast as I can. Hey, how's it going, Lars Enix? You're over on YouTube. How are you today? Thanks for hanging out today. I'm just doing a map for the Pathfinder beginner box set. Menace under Menace under Otari. I believe I said that was uh, the standalone adventure. I believe the standalone adventure is Trouble in Otari, not Menace Under Otari. Menace Under Otari is the uh, beginner box set. Menace Under Otari, I believe, is a 64-page adventure. So what do you folks think? Do you, do you folks go into much more detail on line of sight than I'm doing? Or do you guys and gals keep it kind of kind of simple the way the way I'm doing it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to delete this point. And you can do that just by clicking on the point and then hitting the uh, delete key. So I believe we took uh, I believe we took control Z out of uh, yeah, out for now because we need to do some work on it. So so now that I've got this done, I want to get back. Of course, I want to get back into the room. So I'm going to start about here and go back, work my way around and finish the room. So now I'll have, you know, first my first two rooms done. And if I was, you know, normally I would just kind of do everything at once. But, you know, for in my game, we're only going to be playing for an hour to an hour and a half. So I think only doing maybe the first couple, three rooms will be enough before we have to wrap up. So, uh, but to delete, make sure you go to the upper uh, right hand corner and hit the select button. And then you can hit the delete key and that will delete it. So, but you need to make sure that you have you need to have this select button selected. So now I'm going to go back into the walls and I want to do some more lines. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit. You'll notice I do a lot of zooming. So here we go. I'm going back at it. Then I just kind of move it around and sometimes I'll I'll just kind of zoom out, see how it looks, zoom back in. I'm sure y'all probably do the same thing. So let me know in the chat how you guys and gals do your uh, occluders as well. I love doing this. This is so relaxing. It's sort of like 
almost like connect the dots. You know what I mean? Almost. But I, I really enjoy doing line of sight and, you know, lighting and stuff like that, adding effects to the map. And also a shameless plug for Josh's stream on Saturdays at 3 p.m. here on the Fantasy Grounds channel. You know, he does a lot of beautiful maps. I'll be doing a couple of maps as well for like maybe random encounters and stuff, but I've already got, I've got probably a thousand maps already. So there's really not a lot that I don't have already, but there may be some specific maps that I may need from time to time. So, all right. So I need to see how far I'm up to the second So That's about right here. So to stop, I'm just going to hit the escape key and that will that will stop it right there so that's that's good so i'm pretty much done with the two rooms that i think i'm gonna do today so now i also want to look at the map as well so i can i can see that there are some pillars these look like stone pillars right so i want to go ahead and i want to i want to do some rectangle Occluder. So just go up to the top upper right hand corner, select rectangle. And uh, I won't do it on the very edge. Like I said, I like to do it inside a little bit because I, I like the I like my players to be able to see what's blocking their line of sight. You know what I mean? If they just see something, a black edge, they're like, well, what is that? But if you give them a little bit like I've done here, they can see that it is a stone pillar and they'll be able to say, oh, OK, this is a stone pillar. So I'm going to do that with, uh, in fact, I think I'm going to delete this one. I'm just going to hit select, then I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to hit the, the delete key and it gets rid of it. So I'm going to go back into the rectangle and I just want to give it a little bit more to where they can see. Yeah, I think that's good. And you know what? I think I'm going to delete the other one. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to delete all of the points. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do another rectangle here, which... <laughs> well, I just keep butchering this, don't I? Yeah, this is my first time using a line of sight. <laughs> yeah, I just like to, you know, I'm very, I guess you could say, retentive on... I, you know, I like things to, to be a certain way. So there we go. I think that will work. So now the, the players will be able to see a couple of uh, stone pillars, and I'm going to do the same down here. Hopefully I'll do this right the first time. Here we go. All right. Here we go. There's another. Now these rocks, they're pretty small. I mean, that would definitely be difficult to rain, but I don't think I'm going to add any kind of terrain or anything like that. Now, however, I will add something for the barrels because these barrels are literally blocking. These are huge barrels. I mean, they're five foot wide, probably, you know, five, six foot tall. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could use a terrain feature which I think I might go ahead. No, I don't think I'll use the terrain feature. What I think I'm going to do is add another wall, but I'm just going to connect the wall from here to here. So if I do that, then the players will be able to see the barrels, but they won't be able to see through them. You know what I mean? So I think that is going to be what I'm going to do for these barrels. And I'm going to do that same thing down here for these barrels so if there's any kind of creatures hiding behind the barrels then they may be able to see a slight sliver through the pillar in a barrel instead of seeing all the way through the barrel obviously because the barrel's a huge barrel so i don't see anything else that needs any kind of uh terrain or any kind of wall feature or, or any kind of occluder. So I'm going to kind of move now. What I will do here is when the players are walking into the room, in fact, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take glorious token here and put it down for instance, and then I'm going to hit the select now or go into play mode. Now, whenever she's moving, 
she may be able to see the first couple of stairs. And then I'm going to put like a, a cluder wall here that when she walks through it, then she'll be able to see as she's stepped up to the edge of the earthen stairwell that, you know, basically, as you can see, there's 5, 10, 15, 20 feet of height. So I'm going to go ahead and do a terrain here to where she steps through it. Then she can see down the 20 feet into the next room. Of course, that all depends on the lighting she's going to have because I don't, I believe Gloria is a human. Let me uh, double check really quick. Yeah, she's a human. So she's blind as a bat, right? In darkness. So she's going to have to have either a torch, a light spell, or a candle or something like that. So yeah, we'll, we'll worry about lighting in a second. So what I want to do now is go back into my cluders, well, my line of sight, and I want to use the, uh, the terrain here. Uh, and the terrain is going to be a green line. And I think I'm going to put the, the terrain as a rectangle box. And then I'm just going to kind of go right here, maybe. I think I'll do that. So that way, whenever she walks up to this, she won't be able to see through it until she comes right up to it. And then she, she'll be able to see past it. So... So let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go ahead and turn on line of sight. You can see the map has gotten dark. Uh, I've added her to the map. She's blind as a bat, right? There's no, she doesn't have any kind of vision, anything like that. Uh, so what I want to do is throw something on her. So you can go into the upper right hand corner, the effects. And we'll say that she has a torch. So what we'll do is we'll just take the uh, the global effect called the torch and we'll put it on Gloria. So now you can see she has got some lighting on her. So let's see. Let's get to... Okay, let me see. Why is her token not moving? Let me delete this. Let me add her at the stairs. Okay. So now you can see that kind of the shadows coming off of the pillars and stuff, which is pretty awesome. So I've got I'm on play. I am on default play. Okay, so now see as I move around, she can see how she when she's on the the wooden stairs, she can't see through the uh, the barrels. That's the effect that that I wanted. So even though she is at a height. And technically, maybe she might be able to see over the barrels, but there's no X, Y axis axis in uh, Unity yet. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have got a wall here. Where? Why is there a wall here? So I'm going to go back into play mode. She can move around. She can't see anything but the pillars, which is good. Okay, so I've got something hampering the token right now. So let me let me figure out what is going on. So this is what she's seeing, but I can't get past. And see how I can barely see in between the barrel and the wall. That's the effect that I wanted as well. All right, so let me go back into my walls. Okay, I have nothing blocking here. I do not know why this is this is happening. Yeah, I've definitely got some kind of occluder blocking the token. And as you can see, there is nothing blocking access. So, hmm, this is weird. I've never had this happen before. I don't know what it is. So let me select this. Um, I'm gonna delete this. Maybe this is doing it. I think, I actually think that Okay. 
I think that was hmm that is weird that is a hmm okay so I'm gonna go back into play okay and now I can't I can't even pick her token up all right so in the chat has anyone seen this happen yet because my line of sight walls are fine as you can see yeah, something was not right with that terrain that I added. I think the terrain made things glitch out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this token. All right. And then I'm going to turn off the player line of sight. I'm going to add Gloria again. Okay. So now it looks like everything is working fine. However, as you can see, everything looks great. And I can get here. I can move everywhere. I can't. Uh, wow. I can. Even, how can I move through that wall? Okay. Why? Okay. So there's something here. Hmm. Yeah. So there's there's some kind of. That's weird. I can move through this wall, even though it has an occluder. I can move through this, even though I'm in GM mode. In fact, I'm in player mode, so I shouldn't be able to. Hmm. Something's a little weird right now. So there's something here blocking, but as you can see, there's nothing there. So what I'm thinking is if this is broadcasting over here, let's, uh, Let's delete this. Let's see. All right. So now am I going to lose functionality of my token? I am. What is going on with that? Hmm. All right. All right. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like hmm, that's, that is weird. Let's delete that layer. Maybe that layer had something. Definitely the curse of the live feed, that's for sure, John Steve. How's it going over in uh, YouTube? Ted, how's it going? Over in Facebook, how are you? Yeah, this is weird. I haven't seen anything like that. I'll have to send a couple screenshots over to Carl. So let's get back into a line of sight and let's add that pillar again. All right, so let's, I'm on my draw tool, my wall tool. Let's uh let's turn off line of sight. Well, let's go ahead and enable it because I want to see turn off player stuff. So let's do this rectangle again. Okay, so it doesn't I think I th yeah, that's it's really weird. All right. Okay, so let's go back into play. Hopefully I can, okay, I can move her token around, not being blocked by anything. Okay, so I think that fixed it. Okay, so now I'm not able to, I think it was just something on the layer, but it looks like everything looks perfect now, right? Yeah, everything looks good now. So I want to, I want to, you know, like I said, I want to put that, that terrain here. So let's kind of move Gloria back a little bit. Let's go back into line of sight. I want to do a terrain. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's do a line this time. I'm going to kind of just merge this point with this point here and then there and that, and then I'll hit escape and then that, okay, that 
I think that is that. Yeah, that that's that's uh, looking really really good now. So I'm gonna go back into play. Line of sights on. I'm gonna turn it on for the player. So Gloria, she's moving around. Hey, there's a bunch of barrels here. There's nothing over here but a desk and a bunch of stuff on it. I'm going around these barrels. Oh, there's a couple kobolds or orcs or whatever. Oh, but look, everybody, there's some stairs going down, some natural earthen stairs. So when she gets up to the terrain, then she can go ahead and open it up and look down. And now she can move into the next room, which is really cool. So now, seeing that this embankment is only five feet, I don't think I'm going to do a terrain feature on this like I did a terrain feature on a 20-foot, you know, slope of stairs. So I think, yeah, I think I'll go ahead and I'll leave it like this to where she can see because it's only, like I said, it's only five-foot drop. So yeah, now she'll be able to come in here. She'll see some, looks like some fungus and stuff. So let me let me get into here and read this to see if there's any kind of glowing mushrooms. So uh, squeezing through the hole, you find yourself in a cavern, blah, 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 blah. All right. So they get down to slopes, ropes. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't look like there's any kind of uh, any kind of lighting. But you know what? I think I'm gonna add some lighting, possibly. Eh, better not. Yeah. So it says from here on out, the chamber is completely dark unless their description state otherwise. Characters who have dark vision from their ancestry or heritage can see normally. Others need to provide their own source of light, which we had done for Gloria. All right. So, yeah, that's, uh, I think that might be good. We may do another room. It doesn't say that there's, there's any kind of like, you know, these mushrooms are, are glowing or anything like that. So... Now, however, you know, when the, the adventurers come down here, there's another 5, 10, 15, 20 foot drop for stair. Man, that looks so good, doesn't it? Doesn't that look so creepy? <laughs> I love it. Where you can start to see the spider webs and stuff. Boy, I wonder what's in that room. So I think I'm going to do another, uh, maybe another terrain, in fact. I think I'm going to do this third room. So let me go in here, turn off the players. The line of sight is still on. So what I think I'm going to do now is go back into my clutters, zoom in, and I'm going to continue on and do this room up to this cave where it kind of, you know, goes left and right. So I think that's, I think that's probably where we'll have enough time for my first session because there's no counter in this room there is an encounter here and this encounter has some rats it has four rats so i guess i could go ahead and add a token here so let's go into my assets and i'm going to type in rat and then i'm just going to hit enter it may take a may take a second because i have on my developer account, I have every single module map. So it didn't really take that, didn't take that long. So I have lots of tokens. So let's kind of look through all these rats. Some of these aren't rats, but yeah, here's, here's the tokens that I like to use. These are tokens that I put a gray base on. So let's uh let's use this rat. So let's uh let's kind of set the assets to the side. We'll go ahead and we'll generate the encounter. Just hit the down down arrow. 
it rolls initiative, adds them into the combat tracker. And now let's uh, take a look at the map. There we go. There's the maps. The maps, the rats scurry out of the darkness. I'll make them visible. Wow. So Glory could only see that. Now she can see them all. That's good. So yeah, there's where the rats come out from, from the, uh, you know, the darkness. So that that's good. The encounter's working, so I'm gonna delete all of these. I guess I could go into the menu and delete all of my foes. So there we go, the rats are gone. So the rat encounter works, works really nice. I really recommend setting up encounters. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go back into my occluders. Let's go back into my walls. I'm gonna do a line, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm gonna start here where I left off. And you can see, you can just click on a point and it'll just kind of link it up and you just keep carrying on. Here we go, pretty sweet, isn't it? And you know, once you once you get used to it, once you do it for a little bit, it's like riding a bike. You're gonna get more proficient with it. You may fall off a couple times. You may go over the may go over the handle car handlebars and knock out a couple front teeth once in a while, but you'll get used to it. Yeah, it looks really good. So I'm gonna do this this uh, this next room, which is gonna it's basically a spider domain or a place where a giant spider lives. I think it's just one spider, so. Yeah, so this is, this is happening. It's coming together. I love it when a plan comes together, folks. Oops, we'll just kind of join that there. Hit escape. And we'll just uh, continue on with this point. See how easy it is? Takes a little bit of time to get a map set up, but you know what? Once you do this one time, it's always saved. And the only thing I can recommend, folks, please back your campaigns up. I can't, I cannot stress that enough because I, I've seen so many people contact me in support saying that they've lost their hard drive, they had to get a new computer, and they thought that we stored all of their campaign info on our servers, and we do not. All campaign data is stored on your end, which is the host. So I really recommend, folks, that you back up your, your games. Back it up on a pen drive, back it up on, you know, if you have any kind of like uh, cloud storage, it only takes a second, and believe me, you'll save a lot of heartache because about five years ago, I lost 50 modules that I created for Shadow of the Demon Lords and uh, Core RPG, and that was devastating to me. That was hundreds of hours of work that I lost because I didn't back it up. And when you back it up, make sure you back it up after every game. It only takes a, a couple seconds, folks, to overwrite a file. And you'll be happy in the long run in case you do lose your data. You definitely don't want to lose your data. Please, please, folks, do not lose your data because we cannot help you with that. So I'm just chugging along here with my cluder lines. I think I'm gonna stop here. All right, I'm gonna hit escape. And then I'm gonna come across from the second stair. And now I'm gonna start working my way down. And I'm going back to the second room, to the exit. All right. Look at that. And you get faster doing it, you know? And I'm, I'm kind of being, I'm, I'm kind of giving it some finesse too. I'm kind of going around corners and stuff. You don't have to do this. I mean, you can just do straight lines if you want. And I mean, you can be as meticulous as you want to be. That's what, you know, the program gives you that freedom.
So don't don't forget, folks, if you got any questions, please feel free to ask in chat. And once I get to a stopping point, I'll I'll take a look at at chat again. Oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. Almost to a stopping point, so I'll be able to answer some questions for a couple minutes. I'll be going for about another 10, 15 minutes or so, folks, because I've got I've got my Fantasy Grounds Friday stream uh, in at five o'clock Mountain Time. I'm sorry, five o'clock Eastern Time. So I will be wrapping this this stream up here in the next 15 minutes. I've got I've got our very own Brad coming on this week. Brad's going to come on again. We're going to talk all about Fantasy Grounds and everything else. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? It's starting to come together, isn't it? Wow, I love it. I love it. So I don't think the players are going to get past these three rooms. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw just a plain line right through, right through this just so they can't see past it. So that'll that'll block their site. And then next week, on next week's stream, I'll delete this line kind of blocking their view if they get this far. And then we'll continue on and we'll start doing some of the other chambers in the map. So we should be able to get done with this in maybe another couple of weeks or so. But I mean, I could sit down and do this all in maybe an hour to an hour and a half, but I would rather do this with all of you in the chat. So... You can ask questions and you can see how you can do line of slide occluders, ad lighting, etc. So, yeah, I'm really enjoying this. I love doing this. Okay, so the last thing I want to do before I answer your questions is uh, I want to add another terrain feature here. Because like I said, I mentioned, this step is 20 feet down. So obviously, you know, if she's, if Gloria or any of the other players are kind of walking around, they wouldn't be able to, honestly, they wouldn't be able to see down this, just like they weren't able to see down this 20 foot slope of stairs. So let's get back into our, uh, our line of sight. We're gonna go to the tree, which is a terrain. And I think doing something 10 feet maybe will be okay. So I'm gonna create lines again, and I'm just gonna intersect these with the, the occluder points that are already there. So I'm gonna put one there, put one there, and then I will go ahead and probably link it there and back there. So look at that. That got rid of line of sight. I already seen the lighting disappear. So let's go back into play mode. And then I'm gonna turn on the player vision mode. So there you go. Yeah, look at that. That is like absolutely perfect. So Gloria, once she you know skitters back up the embankment here, she can't see into the room anymore because of the terrain features turned on for the stairs. And that's 20 feet up. And here it is, she can't see down the stairs obviously so once she comes to the end here then i can open this up for her and she can see or whatever other party members there so that is pretty cool so yeah that's uh pretty sweet and you know also she can move through and see it as well so when she moves through the other players that are you know up here in the second room with the mushrooms they won't be able to see because if i open it up then everybody would be able to see. So, wow. All right. So I think that's going to be it for this week.